How are you doing, Dean? Thanks for having me on. What's that? Thanks for having me on. Oh, well, my pleasure. I mean, I know you're uh, you got a bunch of meetings, all that. So I appreciate you taking the time to you know make time for us. So yeah, of course. Uh, what I always like to do is just before we get into kind of the FMA and all that, was there um, was there anything you did pre FMA far as martial arts were concerned? Um, yeah, you know, I did a I did a bunch of stuff. Still do a lot of different things. Um, typical. I was, I think, twelve. My parents uh, put me in the you know community center karate type of thing. Yeah, yeah. We all and, did that, huh? <laughs> yeah, we all did that, and I thought it was great. And actually, yeah. you know, that whole thing, you know, people do it and you know fall off of it, and I just never did. I just kept going. So I did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Taekwondo, got my black belt in that. Um, and I actually started FMA when we were in a, uh, we're on a vacation. So my my mom's family, my mom is from Bacolod, you know, Bacolod okay. City, uh, Negros, Occidental. And so we were there, you know, we used to go Philippines for like a month, right? Because we were, we, right at that time, we lived in Guam, right? So, right, so uh, when you- I was... I'm sorry, were you born there? So, so my dad was in the Navy, U.S. Navy. So my parents okay. are, you know, very typical uh, of my generation. My parents were born in the Philippines. My dad okay. joined U.S. Navy. My mom was a nurse. I mean, you could pull 100 Filipinos my age, and there'll probably be like 90 of them will say the same thing. Oh, my the dad's in the Navy. You know. I, I do hear a lot about the mother's nurses. Yeah, yeah so Filipino nurses, uh, you know dads in the military or even women in the military but anyway so we moved around a, a bunch but uh one of those years uh we lived in guam uh from when i was 10 to 12. so we were able to go to the philippines like every six months or so and stay like a month okay uh, but after that we moved to here washington state so and so yeah. just backing up a bit when you're in the philippines um i know you're you're kind of, you know, you played around with the traditional stuff and all that. Was that, was your first exposure to kind of quote unquote FMA? Yeah, totally. So it's about 15, 15 or 16 and we were in Bacola and I told my parents, oh, I want to, I want to learn this. So they found someone and it was a uh, GM Dominador Ferrer of, uh, back then they called it Lapu Lapu Arnis. Uh, okay. And I think uh, I'll have to check again, but it, it's they changed the name a little bit. But you know, this was eighty. God, I want to say what was it? Eighty nine, ninety. Eighty nine. Wow. Yeah. And so we were there a couple weeks, and I got a crash course. So I was four hours a day for a week. So we did like two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, private lessons with uh, GM Ferrer, and it was great. It was a uh, it was single stick and knife, and they had 12 angles. So we did defenses on 12 angles. We did some knife defense. Really interesting style. Really interesting style. So um, what would make um what you know for now for that being your first exposure? What uh what really attracted you to that? Um, well, one with with the system in itself that uh, you were exposed to. Like, what did you um, at that early age, and not really have anything to compare and contrast to? Would you would you find that you liked about it? Oh, well, it was very practical. You could already tell. Like, a lot of it, a lot of the first couple of days was just knowing how to swing the stick, knowing the angles. You know, yeah. really classic Filipino martial arts things, which uh, was in distinction to say karate weapons or even Chinese weapons, very different. You know, yeah, you know, more maybe form oriented per se. Yeah. Um, less form oriented, right? No, you know I mean, I mean, yeah, the, the contrast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one of the interesting things, and I remember distinctly back then, um, the man, the uh, GM Fair that I learned from, he said that the person that he and a few other guys learned from just taught them. It had no systematic approach to teaching them. You know, that's yeah. a really common thing. You can even hear uh, Tatang, Illustrissimo, they, they say the same thing. Just you attack yeah. him and just randomly, yeah. you know, react to the moment. So yeah. his story was, you know, I don't know how many of them there were, but like three, four, five guys, you know, codified the system. 
you know, the yeah. Lapu Lapu harness. And so they, you know, they made the angle, or not made the angle, but they made defenses for each angle based on what he was doing, all this stuff. And when I heard it, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. But then later on, as I got more into FMA, I saw that that was a pretty common pattern, right? You were learning yeah, from someone like, who fought, right? You were learning from someone who actually did these things, either in battle or or uh, contests and, and all of these things, duels. Yeah. Right. And so he wasn't coming from a, a, a teaching tradition. It was just yeah. like, oh, you want to learn? I'll show you. Yeah, yeah I, and I hear that all the time. Like, they, like they, they were so pragmatic. They were just giving you what they used. Not so much yeah. there was actually like a syllabus or bisodario. Right. Or that came later. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And the, the more I talked with Burton, you know, my teacher for past uh, sixteen years, uh, he said the same thing. We kind of talk more and more about all these things, and he said, "Yeah, that's pretty much it." Uh, I also kind of thought, "Well, look at the angles, right?" So in that particular style, and again, it may have changed now. I, I'm I can't say I'm a expert in it or whatever it was just basically 20 hours of work but their number one was a straight overhead strike their number two was a backhand to the leg then three and four were shoulders five six seven so i thought that was super interesting that number one was vertical yeah, overhead and, and two to the to the knees ah. that got me thinking much later on uh you can talk about cincotero right you can talk mm. about angle one and two and all of these things as a syllabus right but it got me thinking that in some styles, I bet you the angles were their favorite combinations. Right? What go high, mean? go low, yeah. right? And yeah. I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. No, and also to good. looking at the angles, I was talking to Burton about that. And he was like, well, you look at the angles, they probably was derived from a blade style because yeah. you're looking at overhead, you're looking at the the holes in whatever armor people might have, whatever mm, mm. you know type of thing. So I thought that was super interesting. I think a lot of the Filipino martial arts, like you said, traditionally just pragmatic. You know, these yeah, these are things that you learn no for battle, no, right? Yeah. These are things you taught your family, or uh, you had you know your clansmen, your tribe, and so later on they tried to uh, impose sort of the, the structure on it for good and for, and for, you know, for good and for bad, really. You know, and just, again, I'm not saying I'm right. It's just what I read in your, in your research and you kind of draw your own conclusion. It seems like post-World War II, when the schools were opening up Kido and some of the Japanese styles, very formalized. Oh, yeah, very absolutely. Silver, incremental belts, the whole nine and yards. I, I think uh, even, yeah. even those guys, those models will say the same thing because karate, especially, if you look at uh, uh, Bak Bakan, right, and the Ricketts and all of them, they loved karate. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the stories that Burton used to like to say is Christopher Ricketts, his sidekick was like one of the fastest, strongest. Yeah, yeah. and I, I totally believe it. I totally yeah. believe it. You look at the history. Uh, I've I've met people that also knew uh, GM Tooper, and he was fast. He was strong. He loved kicking. Uh, you you know, looked at his uh, Sagasa stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sagasa. Yeah. Uh, you looked at his uh, relationships with the, the different professors yeah. around there. And so they like that, yeah. right? And, and in the Philippines, it's interesting. Anything for, uh, yeah, I, I can say it. Anything foreign usually uh, is taken as, as seen as better, right? Which is, yeah. I guess, you bad know, they, in, a, in an aspect, you know? Right. It, it's, but you know the the whole uh, nat nationalism and, and all of that has, has improved. Filipino martial cu culture, I think, is way more uh, appreciated now than before. Yeah. But you're looking at you know colonization, all of these things for hundreds of mm. years. It's a really complex, complex dynamic. So yeah, yeah I've just kind of gotten off track a little bit, but no, I, no, I no, no. This, this is all this is all parallel. So this is all great. Yeah, well, I agree with you. I think. You know the fact that they were you know how many and people coming in invading colonizing that right i mean who knows they might look at their own stuff as suspect and say like well right these guys might yeah which is such a shame in its own right because like you said today with social media yeah we totally. being smaller now i think people are obviously getting a better appreciation you know yeah and that actually is a good segue to the next thing i i studied in in, in fma was a modern artist over there and so for, uh actually no it was here in washington uh my dad had a friend who had i think they had just came over 
uh, from the Philippines, and it was Guru Alina, Dong, uh, Dong Alina. And he would come to our house. We had a big garage, uh, him and his kids, and my friends, and my brother. And he would teach us uh, artists and, and modern artists. Uh, have you done a bit of modern artists? Very, very little. Not enough right, to really right. give, you know. Right. It's great. It's great. I mean, the, the story was uh, with Presos, he really wanted this to be a part of uh, Filipino physical education. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and, so, yeah. My right? There. and then you see uh, see those things where, again, they had belts and, and uh, mm. uniforms and, you know, not necessarily like Filipino traditional, but it's, it's a great system. You know, he uh, mm. systematized a lot of the, the Sinawali, right? A lot of the single single stake, single night. It's a, it's a complete system. Very good. You know, a lot of what you see in a lot of different styles is in modern earnest. It's a great style. Yeah, I had a, I had somebody on here, Frank, and uh, he's actually lives in my state, and he was one of the original uh, people to bring the state and get exposed. I'm talking like uh, '80s, which for Connecticut is unheard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and he and he, he paralleled much of what you're saying is that. You know, without him, who you know, obviously Gu Dan, Leo Guy, hey, the other two that come to mind as far as what they did for FMA in USA. But Remy Priest says, I mean, you can't, you know, granted he was getting the traditional schools, but the fact of the matter is he was spreading it, you know. Right. You know? And he was very good. I've heard from a lot of people that he personally was very good. Yeah, him and his brother. Now I've heard, yeah. 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 So I, I did that uh this was a while ago. I must probably been 17, 18. So uh, probably maybe at least a year for that. And so it was great. Just not, I don't mean to cut you off, just to back up a bit. So was there, a, was Washington a stop before Hawaii? Is that fair? Is yeah. That fair? So I, oh, I grew okay. up, I pretty much grew up here, uh, high school, you know, junior high, high school, college. Yeah. Then okay. I went over to Hawaii. I uh, went over Hawaii, gosh, when was that? About 2002. And so, I started training with Burton. So before that, did you, when you were in Washington, did you ever go back to the Philippines? It was or why yeah. after Washington was pretty yeah here and there, but I didn't really train that much. Oh, it was more of just visioning, yeah. not okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Okay. And and at that point, I had my, you know, I had enough that I could self practice, right? That you you could do stuff but on your own, and uh, yeah. And then I, I was doing all kinds of other martial arts too. Yeah, uh, so. Chinese martial arts, you know, all that stuff, wushu. And really, for in terms of fighting, like really fighting with a stick and knife, I, I'd say I didn't really learn that until I started with Burton. I think that's safe to say. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. functionality of it. You know, I definitely yeah. knew how to swing a stick and, and the angles and, and all of these things. And again, Sinawali and coordination. But it wasn't until I trained with Burton that I... Where you could actually to... apply. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But there was... Absolutely. I know you got you, you so you're you're um, we're on to Hawaii now. But there was before you got with Burton, there was you did some Ville Brill. Am, am I correct? Yeah. So and again, I'm not a certified or a instructor or anything of that. But uh, when I first got on, I, I found uh, uh, it was uh, Professor Bertel and Jamie Bertel of Villa Brill Largusa Kali. So again, it has to be Villa Brill Largusa. You have to say Villa Brill Largusa Kali because that's the that's the style. Right, it wasn't this Villa Brill. but anyway, uh, it was it was great. I learned from him, and I, I think I told you this before. It was Sunday mornings, you know, once a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and I often turned out to be private lessons, semi-private, because nobody <laughs> wanted to train on Sunday mornings. Yeah, we so I did that for, yeah, I did that for a few months. A super interesting style uh, until he had to move. He moved to Maui, I think, and uh, so I did that for a bit. Uh, it was interesting to compare that later on. To what I had learned from Burton, from what he had uh, seen from Villabril Kali and uh, GM McGlinty, you know, right now. Yeah, tell me about yeah. that gentleman. Yeah. yeah. It's, so it, it's, it's very interesting because you you have to look at you know when a pers a particular person learned from uh from one of the masters, mm -hmm. you know what time period it was, or also what life, right so. the stage of life and like what their intent was, so. Uh, yeah, super interesting. But and I, I only had a, you know, relatively short time with that, but it was great. And then also, cool. uh, uh, Tobo Kali, I took one or two classes back then. Hawaii was great. Hawaii was the, you know, in terms of Philippine martial arts, you can't, you know, yeah, can't huh? beat it. So, 
from from for real. I mean, I'm going to sue mostly in edge weapon interpretation or. Um. Well, if from what I remember, uh, the Villabil Kali, uh, Lergusa Kali, they we went over uh, angles and numerata. Um, I cannot say if it was specifically blade versus stick uh, but they uh, back then and again maybe it's changed you know this was how many years ago I emphasized footwork circular footwork to me a lot of it really did resemble what I learned in Chinese martial arts uh, Bagua yeah so I'm not sure again whether it was something added on later or if it was just very similar yeah, right, right, right. But right. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I liked so, it. Very interesting. But I didn't really, after that point, explore much except for what I got from, from Burton on that. So, all right. So we'll, just uh, circle. What, what year is this about? Uh, when, uh, when I was in Hawaii, I was there from 2002. So it was in those couple years. And then I started with Burton in 2004. So you started with Burton in 2004. So how did you guys... Uh... How'd you guys link up? Well, of course I knew him from all the magazines, all these things, mm -hmm. uh, and I knew he was on the island, but I actually couldn't uh, go to his classes because I had a, I was working in a clinic then, I'm a physical therapist, and I was working at a clinic where uh, those days, uh, those evenings that he taught, I was working all day. Uh, and I worked. Tuesday and Thursday? Every, yeah, Tuesday and Thursday. Still, still, still Tuesday and Thursday all these years later. Uh, but I knew him. I mean, it was also interesting because one of my uh, co-workers, his brother, uh, Brad, was uh, with training with Burton for a while, too. So I had talked with him. And then actually, I ended up quitting that job. And then as soon as I quit that job and had another job, I went and I called Burton up or called Sarah up. And then I just started. Uh, how, how far were you far as distance? From, oh, like the school where yeah. I lived. Oh, yeah. in Hawaii, everything was 15 minutes away. <laughs> right? If you live in town, everything's 15 minutes away. Yeah. So I, lived, I lived in town in uh, Pololo. The gym is uh, yeah, yeah, 15 minutes away. Hey, I got a couple right. comments. Just, um, hi, from Phil. Oh, hello, Doran. Doran Sordo. Uh, Chad Belly. And Jolando. Rich, thank you guys. So we got some uh, got some commentators. Thank you. Um, hey guys, you know, Duran right. is a oh. Duran is a has known Burton for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's under uh, uh, he's one of Jim the, Ricketts. Uh, I know, under Rich, huh? He's man. Yeah. And over in Barakai, Barakai. Yeah, wow. I got yeah. I got to go over there. Yeah, I I, I know. One day, I'll, then I heard twenty four hours on a plane. And just <laughs> well, from where you I are, I really want to. But, yeah. uh, from where you are, well, what yeah. you have to do is just go to Manila for a bit, chill out, and then hang out. Oh, um, right. So yeah, it was. Uh, I started with Burton in two thousand four, and back then, yeah. uh, he only taught the JKDU, JKDU as a couple classes, beginner and uh, you know advanced. And Kali yeah. was just a part of that, so, so it was uh, in the last. 20 yep. minutes. Sorry? Oh, so, so all kind of lumped together in one class? Yeah, it was all lumped together in one class. Uh, it was all, uh, it was basically his MMA self-defense, you know, oriented. And uh, the weapons portion was about 15, 20 minutes at the end of the class. So very, you know, when we talk all about right. Battlefield Kali, it's very uh, fundamental. We have, uh, you have fundamental techniques and then you're drilling, you're sparring right away. Right. So, all right. And so, so no miles yeah. Yet. Yeah. So, you know, and that's, we got better very quickly from yeah, even sure, just that short amount of time. Yeah. But if you wanted to do more, which I did, uh, so you did private lessons. And so, so I started private lessons. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. and my first, uh, I'll remember this distinctly. My first private lesson was on the knife because I wanted, you know, I wanted to learn the knife. Mm -hmm. And, things from that first hour, you know, I've been using for the last 16 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like I, yeah. like I tell everybody, I mean, we're going to get more into this, but uh, he just, um, my first program I did was, uh, was the stick. And 
it's not that I hadn't seen that stuff before, but the way he compartmentalized it and just the very structured levels, it was unlike there was just no way you could fail. It just the way it was structured. I just I never seen anybody take curriculum that could put in an individual module as well as he does. Right. You know? I think it's uh, all his experience, and then uh, you you add on. Uh, you know, what he did with dog brothers and, and all of these yeah, things. A lot of actually his uh, actually it's his, it's his scientific background too and yeah, just kind of test yeah. test but so with that the the first the first couple years of that was was that and then he uh, opened up and and began his uh straight battlefield collie class too and so oh so uh, it was a class actually before he actually put out the, the modules sort of, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, we were, uh, so, yeah, so that's, I, I'm telling you this because it's, it's an interesting history. Uh, he, had, of course, had taught, you know, Kali and Silat and all these things for, for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And then he uh, got, and he decided, okay, let, we're, I'm gonna go and just go straight functional. You know, what can someone use right away uh, to defend themselves, you know, in a real fight? And it's not that he, he threw away a collie in the sea lot. He was still practicing, still doing it. Again, private lessons, but he really focused on if he was teaching publicly, you know, those those fundamental things, even in the weaponry, weaponry, fundamental, fundamentals, fundamentals. So and, when he made that transition, so did he actually allocate a specific class towards that? So it wasn't lumped together? Was there a separate class? So the battlefield collie was became a separate class. Uh, I, I wish I could tell you the year, but it, no, it no, must have been around. No it must have been around 2006 or so. So, and so there was a hand. Yeah, so it was a there was a handful of us, of course, that is our students already, and uh, and then it became, you know, of course, more and more popular. But that's when he uh, he really started teaching it publicly again. Oh. And then yes, and then all of that stuff. Out of that, he he developed the the distance learning modules for mm -hmm. stick and for knife, and uh, I'm in those DVDs I, <laughs> from I, that. I, yeah, I am. so I definitely yeah, yeah. definitely saw so, you. So uh, so us, a few of us, yeah. really, you know, that was for me. That was what I liked the best. Yeah, i had done a lot of things, right? You know, um, but for me, Kali is Kali is the best. Kali and Silat. Yeah, and yeah. so that that was. Uh, you know, until I left, I left uh, in 2010 when uh, we had our boys. We have twin boys. And so that when they were a year old, my wife and I, we came back here to Seattle because she has family here and you know, it's just better. But before we left, uh, Burton gave me instructorships and the stick and the knife. So just, uh, that, um, just getting back to the class, um, when, he's, when he formed the class and all that, um, because uh, this is new to me, so I find it fascinating. Uh, mm -hmm. What, like, how? What was the make? Like, what was allocated? What time was allocated? And all that, based on his oh. functionality. Yeah. Like, so uh, I can tell you right now, because it was the it was the format probably is still the same. Because uh, uh, I was just there last last. Oh man, it was already a year ago. But anyway, I was there last spring break, and I always go back to classes, of course. Uh, in the beginning, coordination. He's this Sinawali. So his uh, universal cinewalling pattern. Then you go over precision, you know, technique, whether it's stick or sword or knife, yeah. right? And then you have drills from that, and then you have sparring, and that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. yeah, it's great. And then you know that within that time, you're you're learning a lot, uh, and depending on the makeup of the class, whether they're straight beginners or they're people that have been doing it for a while, he can, you know, add in some really specific things. So again, this is something he's always done. Uh, even or not even, but uh, when I first started classes with him, he had what he called the quick start curriculum, right? The quick start curriculum for JKDU is a determined aggressive attacker, right? Who is just going all out on you. Mm. So what are the techniques for that? Right, and then you do that for several months and, and or more. Then you go on to the next step where this person is an aggressive attacker, but also knows a little bit more. So maybe they're not just gonna rush you. They're gonna, you know, probe you, attack, and you know that whole kind of sparring thing, right? And it's the same thing for Battlefield Kali. 
with someone who's just going to try and take that club and just whip the hell out of your head, right? It's a caveman number one. You have to deal with that first. Then you have to deal with someone that's a little bit more sophisticated and advanced and all that mm-hmm. stuff, right? And so that's where that's where we developed out of, right? And then, uh, you know, of course, it was safe sparring, soft sticks, soft knife, all the gear. But then a little bit later on, uh, a few of us, actually quite a, a handful of us, uh, went for rattan, went for the harder, harder uh, contact. And then to me, that's when I started feeling like I developed even more. Yeah, right. Yeah. You, you better be, you better be in tune. <laughs> yeah. So we did that amongst ourselves, and then later on, when I came back to Washington, I did, you know, with my students here and private lessons with, you know, hard. Mm-hmm hard stick fighting, but also, you know, there's a few events here, uh, you know, especially yeah. the warrior tip on, uh, that my friends, uh, Belton and Lamar, uh, Lamont have put on over the yeah, past few years. Yeah, so yeah. Very good. Very good. Uh, the, the Pakiti, the Pakiti guys. And then, uh, up in Vancouver, the beat the crap out of cancer, uh, events, uh, excellent, excellent, uh, great fighters, uh, yeah. good friends up there. Learn a lot just from yeah, you know, that yeah. whole grouping up there is just I mean you got master you know Tommy. Uh, oh yeah, Tom D. Towns, yes. Excellent. Ken, you know, Ken. Uh, I mean there's yeah, uh, that's that's another yeah. that's another guru uh guru Louis Lindo. Yeah. Huh? He was uh, excellent. Uh he and uh Burton actually were in uh in Osano Academy together years ago. Uh and Guru Louis is also under uh, Suwanda. Very yeah. close to Herman, Huck Herman. Uh, and I actually uh, learned from his student, Ed Wong. Uh, one of my, uh, he sort of certified me in his modern Shimande system. So over the last few years, yeah, over the last few years, I've, I've trained with him. Excellent work. Uh, I, I, what am I? I got a level three instructorship under him. So, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, Vancouver. Vancouver is great. No, it's, great okay. yeah, it's on the list for me to, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so uh, with that stuff, I felt like I learned even more because then yeah. uh, uh, people are really trying to hurt you. Right? Yeah. You, there, you right. have to have that. Yeah. You have to deal with that aggression and mentality. It's it's just right, right. Um, getting back to Bert, like, um, and all that, I know uh, far as long distance, Sword was one actually you did long distance. Yes. But even though, but you, when you were in the class, you still had, you still can give, you still had some assembly that knife was kind of separate, stick was kind of separate, even though they weren't put in, you didn't do the long term, I mean, the long distance pro, programming per se, like the sword. Is there one that really, like, because uh, obviously we've all done them, me and you. I, just, I thought it'd be interesting, maybe do some compare and contrast. Like, is there one that you, really gravitated towards or to, or a particular level within the module that stood out to you? Um, no, I loved it all. Loved every aspect of it. Probably later on, I would say uh, the blade, and, you know, so it's the sword. So, um, yeah, so we went through all that and he taught actually a little bit of sea lot within it too. Yeah. But uh, I had, I only, I can't say that I've done, done it all. I have helped him, you know, we did a couple of years ago. Oh man, more than that. Maybe three, four years ago, I helped him with the sea lot for the black belt magazine shoot. You know? Yes. And then, and that yes, was great. Yep, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I actually didn't go through, uh, you know, the full program for that. I, I practice it. I, I feel like I know good parts of it, but I'm not certified in it. But anyway, like uh, the sword was the first time I did like a full, I wasn't being trained with him you know, training with them every day. Mm. Uh, and so I did the modules there. And as you know, what it is, is it's not just you watch some videos and then, oh yeah, you're certified. Yeah, 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 you're right. What, right. Yeah, what it is, you uh, you learn the lessons through, you learn the drills, the techniques, and then you do sparring rounds. You have to log sparring rounds. So it's uh, in general, what what is 120 rounds, right? 120 yeah. rounds per isolated target, right? So you got hand sparring only, yeah. head only, right? Binding. So uh, it took me, golly, a little over a year. And I was sparring a lot for that. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I went through it pretty quick just because I was lucky enough to have students and training partners. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Right. Just having those people that are available that are going to give yeah, you a absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Key, key component. Yeah. What, um, yeah. what did you think? This is what I really like. I went through the whole stick. All the way up to I, I'm level seven, um, mm-hmm. working on level eight. But what really, what I really loved, I mean, I again, as you said, I love them all. But what really captivated me was the stick clinch and ground. Oh, sure. I thought that yeah. was just some of the best material and how it came out. It was like it was stuff that I actually like had success in and all that. Oh yeah. I, I thought that stuff was was just fantastic. Right. I think you have to look at where uh, it came from. And of course, it's Filipino work, but also uh, uh, Burton's uh, work with in Greco Roman wrestling, you know, with Randy Couture, you know, for stick clinch, and also, you know, being a BJJ black belt and working all through that. And so that really, uh, you know, emphasized the, the functionality of it. But once you have that kind of you know background, you can go back and look and see the various things that are in the FMA that maybe you weren't, you know, he talked about this a little bit over the last few years. Like you would think, oh, maybe that would work, maybe it won't. Mm-hmm. But once you have this, you know, progressive resistance sparring background and, 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 and styles that were really devoted, you know, to clinch and to the ground, adding mm-hmm. the weapon in now you begin to really understand what what you can do with it versus something that's uh, maybe it looks good in demonstrations right maybe it's just just kind of fancy thing to to impress people right um, but doesn't mean that it's coming out and you know in the full functional with somebody resist- it might it might but you have to yeah. you have to figure it out for yourself you can't yeah, right. say, maybe, oh maybe it's gonna work it. no yeah. you, you have to try it out you know you have to try it out yeah yeah that's what i like about it. like you know he's like obviously Put that time via science lab and you know, what he what he mentions all that um right yeah, and that was another thing too he only taught things that uh that he was able to uh to do and in full resistance sparring yeah no no I, absolutely which i i really admire about him that he's that honest that's yeah um but also about- though and it's not to say that things won't come up a little bit later because he also says that too uh you know as he was continuing on and then you know kept practicing, kept training. And I've, I've been there a few times where mm-hmm. he did something. I'm like, where did that come from? Holy crap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it, and I think a lot of it was uh, sort of this muscle memory, this neurological memory from, from a lot of the, you know, a lot of the pattern work. And yeah, then, so, and what have you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. There, there's a, there's a very, there is a place, a very important place for, uh, for some of these traditional coordination drills, coordination patterns. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, what can you tell us about his overall, just so for the viewers, I mean, obviously me and you know it, but for those who maybe uh, have heard about Burton, they're seeing his stuff on social media and all that, but maybe haven't took the step, his overall philosophy, what, what, you know, regarding his modules, or, you know, what could you maybe tell the viewers about that? Well, one of the things we just said right right now is that and anything that you're teaching uh, you're learning from the from these uh, distance programs has been proven like proven to work by him by our students right by everyone doing it and so you put in time you practice and you'll know that this will work right yeah. it's distilled into those fundamental fundamental uh, techniques and drills which you aren't, li- and again, you aren't limited to those. So this is all for me. And again, I, I, you can probably confirm with him if you want. But uh, for me, this is all foundational. So you, you don't go and you say, okay, I, I, I've looked at all the DVDs or you know the online for for the knife and the stick, and then that's all I need to know. That's all. No, it, it's your foundation he's giving you to then explore, and that was something that he did. Uh, you know, I remember distinctly from training with him, you know, over the years is he, uh, for example, we would be sparring and be doing things and he would, you know, how people would, uh, a lot of teachers and coaches would yell out and tell you what to do and say, oh, you know, stop that. You mm-hmm. know, he very rarely did that unless there was something yeah. really, really yeah, bad. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. But he, he very rarely did that. 
and I remember one time in particular, uh, we were sparring pretty good, I think it was steak. And one of my things, and I've done it later on, actually, and this was years ago, but I would stop, put both my feet together, and, and wait. It's sort of like my attack by draw thing, because I knew where my balance was, and this is, yeah, I knew where the distance was. Now it's not like when you're just clashing in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, again, it, it, it's whatever. But I, I would do that. I was just playing with that. And uh, I would do it. And I was pretty successful. I actually did it a number of times later on, years later. But I remember uh, doing that and then going over to talk with him because he always you know, talks with us after. And he was like, you know, I could have told you to stop doing that because it's not very it's not great if you if it's the first thing you're doing you should not right but again i've been learning how to fight i already knew what to do but he said um, uh, but i let you do it because you know it start it was working yeah right it's working and so that type of thing you have to have the foundation uh later on he would also say that too um you know i know me uh, my friend walker my one of my training partners that uh, we just trained all the time over together there uh we would play around with different things that were uh, maybe a little less than functional, right? Uh, but he said, well, of course, you should do that because I already know you guys can fight. I know you guys yeah, can right. fight. So now, yeah. Now's the time you can play around, right? Yeah. And maybe you'll get something out of it. And, you know, I think it was some trapping things, yeah. right? Or some some others kind of, you know, fancy stuff. No, that's neat, right? Because you already, you know, he's letting you go outside the box because you, he's already seen what you're capable of, and so why not right. do some self experience Yeah, right. What about, and um, so that's what that's what it is with the modules, and that's yeah. why the spar rounds are are super important because you yeah. when you you go through the modules and you do the sparring rounds for each level, and then uh, you send in video of yourself and your training partner sparring. He can tell if you've done the round or not. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? right. And so that's the difference between that and just kind of online learning and like, oh, yeah, uh, here, yeah. here's your certificate. No, yeah. you, you send the video in. He, you can tell if, you, if you've done the round. He's going to work in. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, yeah. And you could tell, too. Anybody could tell. Once yeah. you start seeing somebody move and, and, and doing yeah. things, you're like, you can tell how long someone's been. No, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. What um what about that word functionality that keeps coming up with him? What can you uh what can you tell us about that? Um yeah, I mean that's something that people have kind of debated about for, for forever, right? They're like, oh, is this real? <laughs> right? Is this karate you're doing real? Is this kung fu you're doing real? Right. Um or, but what does that mean, right? And and again, you can you can break it down to a couple of things. Like if someone is really trying to hurt you really trying to hurt you super aggressive is that thing going to work yeah. is that thing you're practicing going to work well you better find out before it's real yeah, it so that's great. functional right and that's opposed to yes you should be learning how to correctly move your body you should be learning you know the angles and, and, and all these things that's of course of course of course but the backbone of your your defensive and offensive structure has to have that functionality if yeah. someone if someone really wants to hurt you hurt you, kill you, you know, take you away, break you down. Is what you're doing going to work? That's functional. Yeah, yeah. No, well said. And uh, obviously no argument here being in this stuff. Um, yeah, you know, it's, I would say, you know, it's everything is until you find out real time, real speed, real aggression. Right. You know what I mean? You know, right. hard to pull but, yourself off. You know? <laughs> yeah, but again, that's not saying you have to do that all the time or that's like 100 percent yeah. practice because there's also a thing of longevity and the art and, and doing this mm -hmm. thing for years and years so yeah. me was well, i was like 15 16 this is 30 years later yeah. and i want to do it for 30 60 yeah, more, 10, well, whatever time i got left being broken right down. so i can't just be banging no. sticks hard against you know with someone for <laughs> hours and hours a day. Uh, yeah, right. Like, no, I'm the same way. Like, once I think you do need to. I think you do need to have a period of time doing that. I don't think it has to be all the time, but yeah, uh, yeah I'll and I'll keep doing it here and there. But I, I, I feel like I put my time into that. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 no, I've done enough real wood and all that, and I'm 55, so I, 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 right. I definitely go with the hard, hard, soft, and all that. But like you said, I mean, I don't want to be injured. You know what I mean? What 
Right. Um, that's want, also self. That's also an important part of self defense, right? Yeah. You can't be walking around and and you're uh, you're hurt and your your yeah. leg is broke. I do. I went for all that. No. Right. I'm, I'm done with that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's poor. Uh, that's poor self defense right there too. Yeah. You right. Walk around. You can't defend yourself like that. Because you injured yourself by going 90 miles an hour all the time. All right. Um, this was uh, wow, uh, fantastic so far. Thank you. And just. Uh, Great content. When um, is there anything else? Um, so pretty much, you limit yourself now, as far as Kali is concerned, and all that, to pretty much burden. Is that fair to say? Is that? Um, no. I well, okay. Yeah, he's my primary teacher, and I actually kind of run. You know, we we talk all the time. And, you know, message and text, and you know, when we're lucky, we can get on the phone. But I, I kind of always run things by him too. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. not like oh. What do you think of this? I before I even do it, no, I, I play with things. But um, again, like I have certifications under my friend Ed over there, yeah. uh, and uh, I train with you know some different people from time to time. So I'm always learning. But yeah. again, my foundation, my base, is right. from Burton, yeah. and I think it's really been helpful for me to to look at and see, you know, well, what more things can I add to that. Mm -hmm. You know, again, play with it. You know, I've been really interested a little bit late, more lately in uh, in uh, uh, Giron, Giron really? stuff. Yeah, yeah. I love watching uh, watching him move and his son uh, Michael, yeah. Jim Giron there. Yeah, Giron there. Uh, really nice. I've always liked Largo. Largo has been my thing. I mean, you got yeah, the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was never. Yeah, again, I was never really like into the 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 Serata stuff, but not to say it's bad. I was yeah. just never. Yeah, it's good here and there. Yeah, you know, it's especially useful, like uh, parts of it for uh, sword sword work when you're you're bound up. I don't know. Right? No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it? for sure. But um, so let's just before we get into the demo, like, what do you? So you're currently you currently teach. Is that correct? Yeah, I just I, I teach. Uh, just a couple times a week. It's not. Uh, I'm not. It's my not my profession. I'm not making money. Yeah, yeah, but I have a. Uh, I have students that I really like, and, and long term students that are also my training partners. Yeah. So I teach uh, Kali. I teach uh, a women's self defense class. Oh, uh, I have private groups for my uh, for BJJ and and C lot. Oh, uh, yeah, but primarily my my training and my teaching is a. Uh, is uh, by myself. I do some private lessons here and there. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like me. Yeah, right. It's uh, I do it kind of just to foster not only just relationships, but to keep my own skill set. Obviously, definitely not doing it for the money. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 School owner, you know, owning a school and doing all that stuff. It's, it's hard. It's good, so good. hard. I, I did it, and um, I just I love it now when I don't I don't have to be somewhere. Five days right. a week, you know. Yeah, so all power to school owners and yeah, absolutely. Especially with what's going on now, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, right now, and I can't imagine. No, I uh, so hope uncertain. hopefully uh, they get some type of relief or what what's going on. I because I definitely feel for them. Yeah, hopefully this is not gonna drag out and really have an effect on them. Yeah, the the hard part is we really don't know. Yeah, we I really know. don't know when this know. is gonna end. Yeah, but uh. So you have a I'm okay. So you have a demo for us. Is that uh sure. I, I don't I'm not sure how well it's gonna work, but I can I can show it. Uh this and this relates to uh okay, so when we talk about the sword, you know, yeah. uh, it's it's the same, not the same, but you have the 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 distance and measures, right? You have largo, yeah. you have long range where uh you could swing, you're hitting, you got hit hand, leg, you know, all the targets. Then you have a uh, medio range, right? The clinch work, right? Where you can touch each other's hands. Uh, and this is where sword blade work becomes very interesting. Yeah. Because now you're seeing a lot of, of, of why uh, you're seeing certain uh, movements and certain patterns, in, even in stick work, say the serrata. Mm. And, this thing. and that's because when uh, when you're sword fighting, it because it's uh, the blade and it's metal and it's sharp. You're actually going to experience binding, and they you even see this in the Europe, European you know historical martial arts, right? Yeah. yeah. Where uh, you're swinging the broadsword and they just cut. Yeah. 
caught into each other. There's a bound. Yep. There's a bind. You can do this for yourself. Go and grab a couple of machetes from you know, yeah, depot. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we'll find out. Uh, very cheap. Swing them against each other and you'll see. They'll stick. There's going to be they'll that stick small for time. a moment. Right? And the thing with that is they'll stick for a moment and whoever unbinds them first yeah, and gets their sword moving is the winner. Is the right? one you want home. <laughs> right. That's the one. And so that's uh, if if you're talking in terms of like traditional Filipino martial coach, that's that's significant. So you're either in Largo, hopefully, right? You're either in Largo cutting their limbs off, right? Defending your state, doing your stuff, getting out, using your footwork, or you're bang. Yeah. Right? You're banged. And so this was a really, I thought a really good part and really good explanation by Burton in his in his sword module in his sword training yeah. of, of the binds right yeah, yeah. and so with a it's very complex right you have binds where your tip is up you have binds where you're in different sectors you have binds yeah. when your tip is down you know all these things and those are those are all sparring rounds right that's why yeah, it takes yeah. you for, for a long time to do it but there's in particular among that there's the the energies that happen once you are bound with someone and we can go over that a little bit. Uh, let me just say it, and then I can demo it a little bit. Sure, but sure. say you say you someone does a number one to your head, and then you block, bang, and you're you're bound up. So what are the things that can happen from there? You know, the, what are the particular energy? Either both of you just stay there, right, because you're just kind of fighting. That's one. And then there you can you can do your stuff, or you 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 bind up, and then the person. Is so aggressive that he pushes you back. That's yeah. that's a that's a second one. The other one is you you bind up and then they move back, yeah. right? You go forward, they move back, or you should go forward. We'll we'll talk about that. And then the the last one is you bind up and then they try to redirect where it is. So right. say you block a headshot and then they yeah. they try to go lower, right? And they go low. So th those are the energies. So uh, yeah. well, let's see if this this works. Okay. Right. Uh, da, da. This is hard. Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see here. All right. Okay. That works. Actually, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so we're in here. Really typical, like, bang hit. Yeah. Right. In the same sector here. So I'm in here. Bang. And uh, we're we're stuck, and it's whoever fights. So you can disengage here, right? So you can be over the top, bang, and then you, you know, very typical thing here. The the thing here though is you can't just go here and stay here. You have to go and you angle out. Yeah. You have to go and you come in. Because the, the thing is, he might be staying there for a second, but that means he's going to stay there forever. Yeah. So correct. the energy kind of have a little bit of nuance there. The next one, say you, you hit, bang, and he's so strong, he starts pushing you back. Yeah. Right? Bang, he just starts pushing you back. If you backpedal, you're going to lose. Yeah. Right? Someone can run faster forward than you can run faster backwards. So this is where the footwork comes in, and then you angle out. You come mm -hmm. through, right? Bang, and you come here. All triangles, right? Really significant work. You know, Filipino triangles save your, save your life. The next one is you're bang, and but then you go forward, yeah. or he goes backwards. Right. Okay. Forward if backwards. he goes backwards and you don't go forward, there's that disconnect, and then now it's yeah. you fail or, yeah. or whoever it is. Yeah. So yeah. if he goes backwards, you have to follow. Yeah. You have to follow, and again, you can go forward and do all these things. I'm really simplifying here, but that, that's what it is. Okay. The no, next no, no, one no. is um, yes. Yeah. Before yeah. pressure, and then right? and then the last one. Or one of the ones that say you, say you do again, either you're in a roof or you're in here, and then the person decides he's going to try to come out and then go low, right? right. Or you hit here and you come here and it goes high. So you have to deal with that. The right? Right. This is hard because this requires a partner. Yeah. But I think you get a, a little bit of a sense of. No, I do. You know, fact, when we were talking, I told you what, like the last section I left off on sword before I started doing oh, it. Yeah. It was this. It, oh, yeah. it, it was it was level three. This this stuff, you know. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, I remember this because uh, I did the majority of the the buying work with uh, one of my students, Jared. 
Really good. Good in Kali. I've been teaching him for a while, but also a great wrestler. He wrestled a bunch. Uh, and we found a lot of team. things out from this. Yeah. We found a lot of great things out from, from sparring. You can do the rounds like this. You can have it where they come in and then then you hit, right? And, okay. and then you stick and then you go from there, right? That sort of dynamic. Or yeah. you start already. Or you so start like, there. Yeah. yeah, you start yeah. there. And we did it both ways. And yeah. there, there's a lot, there's a lot of differences there too, and we we found uh, a couple of things. Of course, you know, Burton showed you, you know, the the variations you can do, mm. the different things you can you can play with. Yeah. Uh, but we definitely found favorites within that. We're like, oh yeah. man, this is the one. If I can do this, the one. <laughs> right. No, I like the idea yeah. there. Like, like uh, the, the sword stuff. Uh, the sword stuff is like, you know, where where am I? Am I gonna be fighting with a sword? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's more, but it kind of depends on where you are. I mean, you have to look on YouTube and, and Facebook and all these things, and you see like mm. Central America, and, Central and America. South America, and Philippines, and and uh, Thailand. You see it. Yeah. So I don't know. It's definitely not not likely going to happen to me today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, right. <laughs> Especially with with the shutdown going on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think we have one question. There was a, here in Seattle. There was there's been a few incidents of. Yeah, you know, really? kind of crazy people walking around with like you know samurai swords or shit. So, yeah, very rare. Though. One question. Hold on. There, I just want to make sure. I thought we had a question for you. Um, and maybe I'm mistaken. I could have sworn I saw it. What is the pressure you feel in your response? Yes, Jolando. That's actually Jolando who's watching here is the guy who was helping me with the bind. Uh, oh, good. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have sworn. Uh, maybe I was just saying stuff. But uh, what, um, no, this is fantastic. Um, and actually, I thought that you did that really well. You, I should, you know, I thought that was fantastic. I thought people could get a good sense of what you're talking about and all that. Um, before we wrap up, so I know you gotta get back. Any, what are you? Any future plans as far as like teaching that? Um, anything to kind of do with FMA? Any plans? I know you mentioned. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I, I like what I'm doing now. I'm just gonna continue teaching. Uh, out of the gym, I teach out of a gym in, in Seattle, uh, yeah. in the university district. Uh, it's called Ten Kicks. Great owners, Stanley and Tom. Uh, it's a it's it's a fighting gym. They do a lot of MMA, uh, Muay Thai, and uh, you know grappling and all that. But uh, they're gracious enough to let me share the space and uh, help them help them do stuff. So I'm going to continue to do that. And I'm always uh, learning from Burton. I go and yeah. try and help him whenever I can. Uh, you know, uh, doing uh, different instructionals or, or video shoots. It's been harder the last couple of years, but I've been lucky to, to help him with that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still going to be learning uh, from my teacher, Ed, up in Vancouver. Vancouver. Uh, and and I can, whoever I can learn from. Yeah. All right. Well, I thought this was fantastic. Um, you know, I think people get absolutely a better idea through you what Bird's message uh, is. And, I you hope know, so. You know, and um, I appreciate you coming on. You know, no, thank uh, you. I uh, one of the things is I always say is I always hope I can represent Burton well. Yeah, uh, my colleague is from his colleague. Yeah, uh, well said, well said. All right, sir. I thank you again so much for taking the time. No, thank you, Dean. Really All right, appreciate no. it. Yeah. All right, guys. Take care. <laughs>